<laughs> well, would you look who's here? Looks like it's going to be a day to remember. Guys, look who the sea washed up. Ahoy there, traveler. <laughs> so Captain really did invite you to join the homecoming celebration. Hey, I heard that you took care of another crisis while you were in Inazuma. Are the rumors true? That's what I heard, too. Thanks to you, Inazuma's vision hunt decree was finally put to an end. Well done, traveler. Captain's got quite the eye for people. She said she was sure that your trip to Inazuma would stir up some waves. And sure enough... <laughs> Look at you being so modest. We all know what you did to protect Liyue Harbor. I've heard that they tell stories about you and Mondstadt, too. The Honorary Knight. Pretty impressive. <laughs> I'd say someone of your caliber would be right at home in the cracks. Right, sailors? <laughs> That's right. Wow, I'm getting excited just thinking of being the Traveler's crewmate. Hey, what do you say we arm wrestle? <laughs> I was worried you'd be too busy to show up. Oh, Captain on deck! Uh, Captain, we were just trying to talk the Traveler into joining the crew. Yeah, come on, Captain Beto. Surely you've got a way to get the Traveler on board. Oh, he's on board right now for the celebration, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, but just one celebration together is not enough. You know what we mean, Captain. All right, all right, I get it now. There is something special about you, Traveler. You earned everyone's respect, myself included. So it goes without saying that the Crux would be honored to have a crew member such as yourself. No doubt about that. But then again, a hero like yourself doesn't just set off on a journey without some bigger purpose in mind. So should a hero really drop what they're doing just to spend day after day drifting at sea with us? Well, if that were the case, then the Crux, known for always moving forward to the next horizon, would instead be holding someone back. Right. Uh, I guess we didn't think that part through. Remember, rather than seeking out strong members to join us, you should be focusing on making yourselves the strongest that you can be. If we are powerful, they will come to us. Isn't that why everyone here chose to come aboard in the first place? Yes. A strong sailor is always looking for a sturdy ship. I guess I almost forgot the first lesson you ever taught me. Thanks for the reminder, Captain. <laughs> Just be sure you all keep that in mind. Now, there's no more need to hound the Traveler, as you were. The Traveler and I have something to discuss. I'm glad you came. Welcome back aboard. <laughs> Thanks. I'll take that. Some rumors have it that the leader of the Crux is so powerful that she could slay the mighty Leviathan Hyshawn without breaking a sweat. I can't go getting too caught up in my own reputation, though. That's certainly not how the Crux made it to where we are today. As the head of the fleet, my task is to keep us on the right course, no matter how turbulent the seas may become. But then again, the crew isn't usually this riled up. It's not that they're arrogant, they're just bubbling with ambition, that's all. Their excitement today comes from their great respect for you, both your strength and your character. So please, don't take it the wrong way. All good then, great. Actually, speaking of Inazuma, I think your good luck must have rubbed off on me on the way over. I made an interesting find on the beach shortly after we parted ways. Let's talk about it over there, where it's a little quieter. The waves are as calm as So after we dropped you off in Rito, we found a shipwreck nearby. Probably belonged to Inazuman pirates. We searched the wreckage and found a map. At first, I thought it was a nautical chart. I was thinking we might discover a new sailing route if we were lucky. But after a closer look, I realized it wasn't a map of the sea at all. It was a Liyue treasure map, and no ordinary one at that. 
Um, nothing like that. I just mean that the map was a mess. So it was the most I could do to figure out that the treasure was probably in Lyra. As for its exact location, I have no idea. I'd say I've explored Liwa pretty extensively, but still, this one managed to beat me. So, I thought of you. Nobody can beat you when it comes to treasure hunting on land, right? Is that right? Well then, it looks like I'm in good hands. Here's the map, see what you can make of it. So, where do you think it is? Jingta Village. I don't see the resemblance at all. How'd you come to that conclusion? Oh, okay then. I'm definitely a rookie at this. <laughs> but your word's good enough for me. Time for a trip to Jingta. You're coming with me, of course. I'll need you to help me zero in on the specific location once we're there. Ah, Pedro! Wow, and the traveler! My goodness, what's the occasion? Just here to visit us old folks once again? It hasn't been all that long since we last had a visit from the Crux. But I'm glad you picked today. You're just the people I need. These two young rascals. They've been arguing with each other non-stop about some petty nonsense or other. I'm too old to get through to them. They won't listen to me. Please, talk some sense into them. Rest assured, Granny Zhuoshin. Whatever the situation is, the Traveler and I will take care of it. Oh, thank goodness. It's Captain Beto! You couldn't have come at a better time. You're the voice of reason I need in this situation! Captain, please! Help me get justice! Whoa, hey, hey, hey! What exactly is going on here? Spit it out, tell me everything. It makes me mad just talking about it. G here? I don't know if he's got a screw loose or what his problem is. But anyway, he took it upon himself to raise, well, Practically a whole army of finches, okay? And now guess what? They fly onto my land and completely destroy at least half of my crops. I asked him to pay compensation, but he refused. Now how is that fair? Captain, I'm innocent. They're not even my finches. I, I just thought they looked kind of cute, you know? So I fed them a couple of times. They're wild birds, though. A couple times? Are you kidding me? That's rich. Really rich. There were two of them when you first started. Two finches. Now you have a whole roof full of finch nests. I swear, every time I come by your place, I think I'm at a bird market. I'm telling you, you are not gonna get away with this anymore. So, yeah. I mean, they laid a few eggs, made a few nests, but finches... Got a finch, you know. These are wild birds. I mean, they'll do whatever they please. So that's how it is. I think I got the picture. Hmm. What's your take? Hmm. Fair point. Granny Zhushin, is there anything left over from the relief funds delivered by the Crux on our last visit? 
Technically, this would be a case of avian damage to agriculture. It meets the relief criteria, so we can use these funds to cover Wenjing's losses. Why, yes. There is plenty left over. The crooks bring such a generous sum each time. There's no way our small village could ever use up all of it. Oh, thank you, Captain Beto. You can bet I never would have managed to get G to pay up, even if I spent my whole life trying to persuade him. Thank you, Captain. You can bet I never would have been able to afford the compensation out of my own pocket. I'll drive those finches away the moment I get back. I can't let them carry on ruining the neighbor's crops. Beto, you do so much for our village, and we could never hope to repay you. Granny Zhuoshin, as you know, many of the boys from your fine village do sterling work for the Crux. The fleet wouldn't be what it is today without them, so please think nothing of it. Gee, Wenjing, I guess you're free to go. Captain Beidou! Captain Beidou, you're here! Pops Shang! It's been a long time. How have you been? <sighs> Don't get me started. I've been having some real trouble with that neighbor of mine, Zhen. We keep having the same argument, and it just goes nowhere. I heard you were in the village, so I rushed over to seek your help. What's the issue? Well, come with me. You'll see. Let's go find Zhen and clear this whole thing up face to face. Captain Beto, you're here. <laughs> I heard that you and Pop Shing had a little misunderstanding. So, what's up? Tell me about it. <sighs> Zhen planted a tree on his property a few years back. I had no issue with it at the time. It's just a tree. But a few years on, it's grown taller than the roof of my house. Every morning when I get up and open the window, I just want to feel the sun on my face, but I'm greeted instead by the looming shadow of my neighbor's tree. It really affects my mood. I asked Jen to cut it down so I could get some sunlight back on my property. But he said no. <sighs> it's like he's done this on purpose just to drive me crazy. Captain Beto, you gotta believe me. I didn't intend to block the sunlight, but there's nothing I can do about it now. It's not just any old tree, you see. That tree was planted there by my late father. Not long after he planted it, he passed away. And just before he passed, he left me with some parting words. He said our family's fortune was inauspicious and we needed something to suppress the bad luck. That's what he planted the tree for. How can I just chop it down? I'll be honest, I spent a few years studying in Liyue Harbor, so I don't actually share his superstitious beliefs. But still, that doesn't change the fact that this was my father's dying wish. Okay, I think I'm all clear on the situation. What are you thinking? Hmm, I was thinking along the same lines as you. Look, Pops, I'm not trying to make excuses for Zhen, but just try putting yourself in his shoes for a moment. Zhen's desire to protect his tree isn't for money or because he wants to hurt anyone, or for the sake of any superstition. He just wants to honor his father's dying wish. Pops, you have kids too, right? Yeah. When you put it like that... Pops, if you can agree to it, I'll have a word with Granny Zhuoshin and see about getting you some money from the relief fund, as compensation for having your sunlight blocked. As for the tree... Uh, that sounds good to me. Uh, whatever you think, Captain Beto. Uh, the tree can stay! Some compensation would make me feel much better about the whole thing. Uh, thank you, Captain Beto. And thank you for understanding Pops Xing. I'll make sure to trim it back when I get home to let some more light through. It'll be such a relief not to have to worry about this anymore. On a separate note, 
I remember the Crux last visited the village not very long ago. Is there some special reason why you're back in person so soon? <laughs> Nothing all that special, just personal reasons. I'm looking for some treasure. Huh? Treasure? Wait a second. That reminds me, I saw Chong Ping and Defu arguing in the fields earlier. It, it, it sounded like they were both trying to lay claim to some treasure. I, I don't know if it's related to the one you're looking for, but, but anyway, they're probably still there now. Really? Okay, well, you and Pop Shing can go about your business now. I'll go see what the situation is. Huh? Beto! You're just in time. Defu is being completely unreasonable. What happened? I'm not being unreasonable, Captain. I got Chung Ping to help me plow my land because it's the busy season. And then, what do you know, he plows up a treasure chest. Way I see it, it's my land. So the treasure belongs to me, right? I think it's a pretty clear-cut case. You say that, Defu. But what you're forgetting is that I came to help you plow your fields out of the goodness of my heart. And you haven't paid me a single mora. It was also my plowing that turned up this chest. However you cut it, surely I'm entitled to at least some of the treasure. <laughs> the domestic drama just keeps coming today. What are your thoughts? Okay, I think I'm up to speed here. If you two really want to take this further, I can get a legal expert from Liyue Harbor to adjudicate. As for the costs, I'll cover them. What do you think? Uh... Uh... Neither of you seems thrilled about this course of action. Okay, so, plan B. I'll be straight with you. The reason I came here today was to look for some treasure. Chances are it's hiding right there in the chest you're both fighting over. So, how about you two stop fighting over it and do me a favor by handing it to me? Of course, I'll be indebted to both of you. If either of you ever needs anything in the future, the Crux will not hesitate to lend you our support. Captain, you're far too kind, really. Indebted? That won't be necessary. If you want this chest, you go ahead and take it. Yep, totally agree. If only I'd known you were looking for this chest. You should have said something. I would have delivered it to you personally to save you the trip. It seems like it's been quite a busy day for you, helping us settle all our little quarrels. Come on, let's go to the village. I'll rally the masses. We'll get some good food and good drink and have a good old get together. Don't worry about the chest. I'll carry it over. What a fine day today has been. Beto has solved an awful lot of problems in our village. She sure has. Without Captain Beto, that compensation payment would have bankrupted me. Yeah, and if it weren't for Captain Beto, I'd still be arguing with Pops Xing. Here, here! We have plenty to thank Captain Beto for, I'm sure. 
I propose a toast in her honor. To Captain Beto. Cheers. I couldn't ask for more than the chance to get everyone together and drink to our heart's content. Cheers! Yeah, that really hit the spot. Wanna get some air? The view in this place is pretty good. We can take a look through the contents of that chest while we're at it. Chang Ping placed it by the water wheel. Are you kidding? Beto can handle her liquor. Come on, come on, let's go. So, I've been thinking. Everyone seems to trust me enough to let me have the final word on their disputes. But don't you think some of my solutions can be a little stupid? You can laugh, I don't mind. Take Chungping and Dafu's wrangling over that chest, for instance. I had no clue who it should belong to, so I just came up with this stupid idea of taking it for myself. At least that way, neither of them would feel like it was unfair. But, I mean, I'm no Ningguang. I can't make a perfect deal every time. And I'm no Yanfei, either. Not all my judgment calls are going to be 100% fair and square. I am Beto, and my strength is in trading favors. <laughs> you think I should be more selective? Some people think their favors are so valuable that they need to plan out how and when to use them to maximize the return on their investment. They view the favor as a bargaining chip. Others see doing favors as a burden, not worth anything in monetary terms and prone to getting you locked in a cycle of constantly returning the favor back and forth. But the way I see it, favors are what keep people connected to one another. Over thousands of years, the people of Liyue have created bonds between each other by doing someone a favor here and asking for a favor there. This means that no individual is truly on their own out there. When someone falls down, there's an invisible net made of human connections, waiting to catch them and get them back on their feet. Over the years, I've come to owe favors to a great many people, and many other people have come to owe me one. These are the countless bonds between us, like so many fish in the sea. And they're the reason that the Crux and I have survived the countless hardships we faced. I believe that if there ever comes a day when the world is overrun by monsters, Liyue's legal system collapses and the land is thrust back into an age of war, it's these bonds that will see us all through the dark days ahead, until we come out on the other side. I'm not saying that. But either way, we have a pretty firm bond between us already, don't you think? <laughs> Was this wind brewed in a winery? It's making me lightheaded. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Something we were literally just talking about. Oh, yeah, the chest! <laughs> oh, I got so immersed in our conversation that I forgot all about the main event. Come on, let's open it up and see what's inside. <laughs> oh, that's it? A whole lot of nothing? <laughs> Not exactly what I was looking for, but you know what? I don't care. The fun part was going on a treasure hunt with you. Come on, let's get back to the party. Tonight, we go big before we go home. <laughs> 